In this video, we're going to tell you in more detail about the online code editor, where you write the code for your game playing bot, and about how you run that code to play a game. This introduction to the key concepts of the site will mean that you can use it to your full advantage as quickly as possible. Let's get started with that now. Whenever you are logged into the site, you will be presented with a main menu at the top of the page that includes an editor link. This takes you to the online code editor. The online code editor page lets you write the code that will play the game. The page is organized into four different areas. At the top of the page, we have the file and game controls. The center of the page is the editor column where you write your code. On the left is the navigator column showing your files. On the right, is the information column that provides easy access to help pages and to program output. Let's look at the options at the top of the editor window first. This section lets you create new files and save them, and it lets you select and control the type of game you are playing. On the left, the new button lets you create a new file in the editor. The editor section is always preloaded with some template code whenever you first select a new game type but the new button lets you create new files. When you click on the new button, you get the option to create a new blank file or to create a new file that's based on some of our template code. The template code is a good starting point for developing your game playing bots, as the template code will always be able to play a complete game as soon as you load it. Next to the new button is the save button that lets you save the file you are currently working on. File names are listed in the Navigator column on the left of the page. Clicking the Save button or using the Ctrl S or Command S keyboard shortcut will save the current file. If you click the drop down triangle in the Save button, you get the Save As option if you want to save your file with a different name. The next options let you control the game you are going to play. In the Game Type drop-down, you can select the type of game that you want to write code for and play. When you select a game from the Game Type drop-down, the list of files in the Navigator will be filtered and will only show files that were created when this type of game was selected. We'll select the Match Game option for this demonstration. Next, we select the opponent we want to play against. You can either play against our automated game playing house bots, or you can choose to play against other people that are playing the same type of game. We've created automated game playing house bots for every game on the site. This means that you can immediately test and exercise your code against an opponent without having to match up with anyone else. There are usually two or three house bots that can play at different levels. Housebot Practice plays a very simple game. You can usually beat Housebot Practice as soon as you have implemented very simple improvements to the template code that we give you. You can also use this opponent field to play against other specific players. You can enter a friend's bot name here to play a game against that specific player. Running the code with a named opponent means that your game will wait until your selected opponent runs their code and will then match them up. The last option in this section lets you select the game style. Each game type can have different variations. Things like the size of the playing board or the number of opponents can vary and you can select the variation that you want to play in the game style drop-down. You need to play the same game style as your opponent if you are trying to play your bot against a friend's bot. Finally, we get the Run button and the Run settings. Clicking the Run button starts a game playing using the code in the editor. A Game Visualizer window will pop up to show the running game. There is an option to make the editor play games repeatedly by ticking the Play Another Game When Complete option at the bottom of the Visualizer window. If this option is ticked, the system will keep playing games until you untick the option or until you click the Stop button. You can also maximize the game visualizer by clicking the icon at the top right of the window. When the game finishes, the stop button becomes a close button that closes the visualizer window. You can also set up the run options under the gear icon next to the run button. 
The options here allow you to introduce a thinking time delay if the game plays so quickly that you cannot see what is happening. You can use this if you want to watch the moves that are being made in a live game to try to manually see what decisions are being made. You can also set a number of games to play in a row. Similar to the play another game when complete option, this means that games will keep playing until the number of games entered is reached. You can also prevent your bot from matching up with another bot in your own account when you select anyone as an opponent. The main section is right in the middle column of the screen. This is the editor. It works like most code editors and highlights the syntax of the code you are writing as well as making code completion suggestions as you type for language specific functions and for variables that have been used in the editor. You can see the code completion working here if we start to enter an import command. You hit the enter key to select the suggestion that is presented. You can also see how variable names are suggested if we add a print statement. If you've made changes to the code and you want to save them, you can use Command S or Control S while your cursor is inside the editor column. This asterisk beside the file name shows if the file has been modified since it was last saved. You can also search in the editor window using Command F or Control F to bring up the search box. It includes options for search and replace and for making regex searches. Finally, you can fine tune the editor using the editor options at the right hand side of the screen. Clicking on the gear option here lets you set your preferences for the font size, theme, line wrapping, code folding, tab sizes, auto completion and indent guides and print margins. To the left of the main editor section is the navigator that lists all of the files that you've created for this game type. Hovering over a file name shows the date and time that the file was last updated. If you want to rename the file, you can either double click on the file name or click on the edit pencil icon next to the file name and a dialog box will come up where you can enter a new name. If you want to delete the file, click on the delete trash can icon next to the file name. Below the list of files, is a game offers section that shows people that are waiting to match with opponents. For example, if someone chose an opponent of anyone when running their code, then you would see that game as a game offer in this section. Similarly, if someone wanted to play against your specific bot name, you would see the offer they had made in this section. You can double click on the offer in this section to start playing a game straight away. The last section on the right is the information section. It mainly acts like a console to display output from the code you have written. It will show the result of any print statements that are in the code you write in the editor. This allows you to debug your code when you run it by printing out variables. This column also displays help and information that you can refer to when you are editing your code without having to go to the main help pages. Clicking on the book icon loads up the programmer's reference that describes the game state and how a move should be formatted for all the different games. This display provides a quick reference to the main information that is required for every game on the platform. Clicking on the home icon returns you to a page that provides an overview of the online code editor. This overview gives you more information and advice about your bot name and selecting opponents. And finally, Clicking on the monitor icon returns you to the last program output that was created when you ran your code in the editor. That covers all of the key elements of the online code editor. There are more videos in this series explaining other areas of the site, so make sure to check them out for more information.